A little over a month ago, I began a build on this bone stock 2000 Chevy Silverado, and the whole objective was to see if its 4.8 liter LR4 could make as much power as the stock 8.1 that I swapped into my other 2000 Chevy Silverado. So we didn't waste any time, and the very first thing that we did was collect some data. I have a draggy GPS box, so I went out and I got some zero to 60 times as well as some eighth mile acceleration runs. And then we took it to a chassis dyno where it made 208 horsepower and 229 pound-feet of torque at the rear wheels. Just to compare against the 8.1, part of that thing was making 308 horsepower and 426 pound-feet of torque. So that's kind of like the benchmark that we are going for. Once we got our data collected, we brought it back to the shop and we immediately pulled the 4.8 out of the truck just because it was so nasty and dirty and I wanted the opportunity to open up the ring gaps to prepare the short block for boost, which will come a little bit later on. Next, we installed a high-performance camshaft. We installed a new oil pump. I showed you guys how to degree the cam. We put the heads back on with some new valve springs, new valve guide seals, new lower locators on the valve. We put new lifters in it. I showed you how to check push rod length, measure piston to valve clearance, and then we put the engine back together with all new gaskets and reinstalled it into the Silverado. Then it was time for exhaust. I installed some inch and three quarter long tube headers and then built a really trick custom exhaust, which sounds absolutely killer. It's got an X pipe that flows into a Y pipe, which flows into a four inch Flowmaster Pro Series Hush Power muffler. And that's kind of where we left things off. So we've just got a handful of items left to finish up before we start hitting the road and doing all the tuning stuff. And the big one is a cooling fan. Now from the factory, this truck had a mechanical fan, which does move a lot of air, but it also sucks up a lot of power from the engine because you know, it's bolted right to the front of the water pump, which is turned by the crankshaft. So any energy you spend turning a big cooling fan, well, that's horsepower that does not make its way to the back wheel. So we're going to free that up by installing an electric cooling fan, which is also in theory going to improve the cooling of the truck. Although we didn't really have any overheating issues before, but this will just make it all run a little bit better. Now, one quick note, I absolutely hate using aftermarket parts in a cooling system, not, not radiators, but like electric fans and aftermarket electric controllers, especially I cannot stand them. So we are doing this conversion using all factory parts from a 2005 or later Silverado. Now the fan package I picked up from Transwest Truck and Auto Parts in Provo, Utah for 80 bucks. So this is a killer deal. And this particular one is from a 2009, a GMT 900 truck with the towing package, which means we have a nine blade fan over there and a seven blade over there. It's kind of like the heavy duty cooling, I guess. So that's gonna move a ton of air and it'll bolt up just like a factory fan, even though this is from a GMT 900 truck. And this is GMT 800. This is actually the same exact fan I used on the ugly truck with the turbo 8.1. Uh, to mount it though, you will need a wider radiator if your truck had a 28 inch one. Uh, there's three tapped holes here in the upper core support. The middle one here, that's a 28 inch fan. The outer one here, that's a 34 inch, er, sorry, 28 inch radiator, 34 inch radiator. Basically the wider one is the one that you need and it'll allow the fan to basically clip on using a clip on the radiator here, a little uh, rubber isolator on the bottom of the core support there. And then that will bolt into the place of the old cooling fan, I believe. Uh, as far as a wiring harness, this is a stock one that Nick Johnson from Texas sent down to me. He's a subscriber. He also sent me the one for the ugly truck, which has been working great. Uh, so thank you, Nick, for that. But basically this is a stock relay block that'll go and attach to the fuse panel under the hood. Um, there's just a few connections. This guy right here bolts to the power lug in the fuse block. So that's where the power comes from. Nice, thick, heavy gauge wire. Um, these two wires right here, there's a factory connection there. On the other end, these plug both into the ECM. I'll show you that, but that basically switches the fans, tells them to turn on. We do have a heavy gauge ground there. And then of course, the two plugs that go into the cooling fans. That's the major stuff for today. I also have an AEM wideband gauge because this will help me, it'll help me a ton with tuning. So I've got a nice histogram set up in HP Tuner. So with the wideband input, tuning basically handles itself, sort of. And then we have a intake tube over here to replace the stock one. That's the part number there. I'll put a link in the description, but basically this is for a later model truck with electric cooling fans. 
And basically this is just going to flow a little more air than stock and it eliminates those big bulky resonators on the factory tube. So it'll make it sound cooler and flow just a little bit more. I didn't decide to go with like a true cold air intake because in my opinion, the power levels that we're going to be at, it's not warranted. It's not justified. And that tube is only like 160 bucks instead of most cold air intakes, which are like really, really probably double that. So anyway, that's the game plan, plan for today. Let's get to work. All right, I started out by just protecting the new harness with some generic uh, braided wire loom that just helps protect everything and it makes it look nicer since you don't have to stare at all those different colors of wiring. Now, I do like to route the wires in the factory configuration, which does take a little time because you have to kind of take some things apart. You know, the battery, the battery tray, the computer mount all have to be moved out of the way just to easily access and route the wires in the factory location. Now, you can definitely run the wires wherever you want, but to me, it just makes most sense to use the factory routing, and I think that also looks the cleanest as well. Um, so back up here on the fuse block, the very first thing you're going to do is actually click in the new electric fan part. There's three spots here. There's a clip there, uh, one clip there, and one kind of on the back side right there. You undo those and you can kind of flip the fuse block back. There's like a little round lug right there. The new fuse block clips into that, and then the wiring harness kind of runs underneath, and it comes out just in that little location right there. Um, next, we have the big red wire for the fan harness goes on this lug right here. This is the connector for the PCM pins to turn the fan on and off. I just kind of routed it there and most of that will get covered up with the black cover. Okay, so we just did a function test. I know that both fans work on low and high speed. I know that the wiring is good. I know the relay is working, all the fuses are fine. And now we just need to move on to connecting everything into the computer. Now on a 99 to 02 Silverado, there's two components that you need to do to make this work properly. There's the AC side of things and there's just the simple fan control. 
Um, now, I'm not going to get into a lot of detail, but I will show you the wiring diagrams that I'm going to be using to make this happen. But basically, um, those are the two connectors on the PCM, C1 and C2, and they are different colors, so that's how you tell them apart. Uh, the fan harness, basically you wire up the blue wire to C233, green wire to C142, and then this will have a pin in it. You just pop that out. That's for a AC recirculation command from the computer. You won't need that anymore. Um, and then the AC side of things, there's three wires that we're going to have to add that plug into an AC pressure sensor that you will need to buy and retrofit in. So this is one that Nick sent me from the junkyard, but I actually just found a harness this morning that comes with um, the sensor, the connector, and enough wire to get it all the way to the computer. And I'll put the link down in the description, but basically you're just now installing a sensor so the computer knows exactly how much pressure is in the AC system, and then it can turn on the fans and turn them off accordingly. But basically when you wire that in, here's kind of the schematic for that, or the, the diagram, I guess. Uh, red or black, or red and black, that's the signal that goes to C214, has to be there. And these are just a five volt reference and a ground. Those can go to many different positions, but my pins for the EGR just happen to be available. So uh, the five volt reference C148 and C123 is the ground. So that's the wiring that we're going to do real quick just to kind of get this fan up and running. And then there are a few more changes that we're going to have to make inside the computer just to like we have to switch it to, I believe uh, there's an analog. I'll show you the fan settings in just a second. I have all that saved in the tune file. But basically, as far as wiring goes, we just get a few things to plug in the computer for now.
It's the next day and I took a little bit of time yesterday just to install the wideband and get it all wired into place. And I figured it's really not interesting enough to show you guys the process, but this is kind of what we're left with here. Um, this is definitely a temporary mounting spot. Um, I, I normally love to do like the A-pillar pods on these, but the, the pods that are actually available for these trucks kind of suck and I hate how they fit. So I just happen to have this little pod sitting around and it's meant to be screwed into place, but I just took some double stick tape and I stuck it on the dashboard. And whenever I figure out where I permanently want to mount my gauges, I'll get it moved where it needs to be. But anyway, that's the wide band. It's from AEM and I like these because they're inexpensive, they're reliable. And this one outputs a zero to five volt signal that I can plug into the tuning little brick there. And that's really going to make it easy to dial in the VE table on these things because you can set up a histogram to record air fuel ratio error. And within a couple of drive cycles, you can get the fueling spot on. Um, in the very next video, I will show you some of my tuning process. I'm, I'm not a tuner, but I can at least kind of figure out a lot of the major stuff to kind of hopefully get this thing dialed in and running where it needs to be. Uh, but basically, phase one of the 4.8 versus 8.1 build off is complete. This is kind of what it looks like, which I'm actually proud of the fact that it doesn't look like much at all. It looks pretty much like a stock truck other than, I mean, you can see the headers and you can see the intake tube. But other than that, I mean, everything's exactly where it was before. There's no flashy colors. It just looks like a well-maintained stock truck. Um, like even the electric fans, I really like that they're factory electric fans and they look like they belong, even though they're from a later model truck. There are no major visual giveaways under the hood that anything's been changed or the engine has ever been out. Now, granted, whenever you fire this thing up and you hear it, it'll definitely let you know something's been changed inside the engine bay, but that's all right. I like a good sound of truck. So here's kind of where we're at. We have a stock rotating assembly with a increased ring gap, which means we're going to be boosting this in a little while. We have all new valve train, new camshaft, new lifters, new valve springs, and all that stuff should help prepare this engine for boost. Right now we have headers, full exhaust, all the way to a four inch muffler. So that'll support a lot more power than we're going to be making at first. And eventually this build will get the same treatment as I kind of did with the ugly truck, the turbo big block, because it started out with a naturally aspirated engine. We put a power adder onto the stock engine and then we have, well, currently we're building a 547 fully forged rotating assembly, big block gen seven for that truck. And so eventually this truck will probably get a similar treatment, maybe a bigger LS, definitely a power adder. And I'd love to chase that quadruple digit power number with this truck, just like we're gonna be with that one. So it'd be like, have a two wheel drive versus all wheel drive, you know, single cab versus extended cab, small block versus big block. Basically we got two kind of racy street trucks that we're gonna be putting together. And I just can't wait to get this one back on the dyno, even in its naturally aspirated form. So we've got about a hundred horse, to make up if we want to make as much power as the 8.1 did. And we're definitely not going to make as much torque with this 4.8, but I think there's a chance we'll get close on the power number. And the other thing to consider is I have some, you know, zero to 60 and eighth mile times to compare. I think even if this truck is a little bit low on power, it might just might actually do a quicker zero to 60 time than the turbo big block because the when i had the converter in that one the the stock converter it took four seconds to get to full boost which meant it had a pretty dismal zero to 60 time so anyway uh yeah that might actually be another interesting thing to note maybe with less power this truck's a little bit quicker we'll find out in a very short amount of time uh, in the very next video you guys see i'm going to be tuning this truck after that we'll probably get it on the dyno in short order provided we have no catastrophic issues and i can actually figure out this whole tuning business um other than that, I have a bunch of stuff in store for the ugly truck. We're going to be doing the rear suspension after this. We have all-wheel drive conversion to do on this guy here, coilovers. I've got a bunch of parts, so I need to get busy. But uh, that will bring this video to an end, and I want to say thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. Um, do me the favor, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment. All those things really help this channel grow, and it helps me be able to do the stuff that I love for you guys. So thank you very much. I appreciate each and every one of you who takes the time to watch these videos. So I'll catch you again in another couple of days.